Hello everyone! This lecture is about creating syllabi, specifically syllabi for online environments. As I've mentioned before, I will be covering as much and as many details as possible. Your specific syllabi will vary, and you'll need to decide which elements to include. Sometimes, a full syllabus isn't necessary. For example, when you're conducting single sessions. In these cases, I'd recommend simply covering goals and the agenda. Regardless, it will be up to you to decide. We'll be covering how to create a summary of your course, lesson, or program with inclusion of objectives, resources, activities, policies, and accessibility. For shorter units of instruction, like one-time sessions, this may be just one-page agendas. For longer units, meeting multiple times, this should take the form of a longer syllabus. First of all, be sure to include a brief summary of your lesson or course. You can keep it as short as you'd like, but a good bet is to keep it under three sentences and try to highlight the key learning elements you'll be covering. For example, this module could be summarized as, Course Management is a two-week course in which we learn how to organize, evaluate, and shape our own online learning spaces specific to the needs of our learners. Short, to the point, and clarifying for someone who may be wondering just what course management means. One of the most important elements of a syllabus are the outcomes or objectives. You should always include at least one of these, even in one-time lessons. In the case of shorter learning spans, sometimes you can include them in your summary. However, for anything more extensive, I tend to include somewhere between three to five specific objectives in a separate section of the syllabus. By including these objectives, you'll help your learners to gauge their expectations for the course. Additionally, you'll have a place to look back to when you need a reminder of your own teaching goals. You'll also be able to check any changes you make to activities against your initial goals to make sure that you are still in line with them. For more on designing learning objectives and outcomes, I hope you can look back to the Foundation module. You'll also want to include a list of course resources needed. This can be books, articles, tools, other materials like pen, paper, and scissors, and even the technologies needed. If appropriate, it's important to remember to tell them where they can find these materials, especially technologies and software. Also, remember to include information on how to contact you, should the need arise. In online courses, it is very important that you direct your learners to safe resources and software. But, while you list your resources, it may be tempting to provide downloadable copies, PDFs, and even sections of photocopied book chapters. Remember to slow down here. Copyright is still a factor, and while fair use of materials does favor use for educational resources, you don't get a blank check to use whatever you'd like. Your best bet is to provide outward-facing links, that is, links that direct your learners to legitimate, licensed, and reputable sites where they can find those resources. Even more preferably, if you have time, is to pursue explicit permission from the copyright owners to use their materials in your project or course. Just be sure to get it in writing. Technology resources are certainly a key element of online learning. So, when you are listing the sources needed, you need to remember to explicitly state if you require access to certain programs. Additionally, if your course or lesson requires a certain level of technological competence, you'll need to state it as well. Often in online courses, you can say that you require familiarity with email, a certain LMS, or anything else that you believe are essential prerequisite skills. It can be uncomfortable to ask for this, but remember that you cannot assume the abilities of your students. And it can be really good to have a baseline of skills that you know your students possess. In some settings, it can also be helpful to point learners to other sources where they can gain the skills they need as a prerequisite. After you list resources, it's always good to include course activities. Try to answer questions like, what will they be learning and doing, and what will be expected as far as assignments, essays, discussion posts, reflections, and more. To do this, you can create a list of assignments or large projects, a list of daily or weekly activities, a schedule of all due dates, a schedule of special events, and perhaps an actual calendar, in whatever learning environment you have. There may be other places to include calendars or schedules, 
but remember to include it in your syllabus if it can help your students. Again, remember that you probably won't need all of the elements we've talked about so far in your syllabus, but you can make your choices as to what to include based on what you think your students will need most. A syllabus without course policies is likely missing a key element to making your OLE comfortable for your students. Policies set the tone and clarify expectations for your learners from the start. There are fewer questions or moments of doubt when you make things like participation policies as clear as possible. I highly suggest that you include grading and assessment policies, communication and participation policies, and accommodation policies. We'll talk a lot more about each type of policy in the rest of this week. Finally, remember to make your syllabus accessible. Usually making it into a downloadable PDF or Word document is enough. But as always, be sure to evaluate the needs of your students to make sure. That's all for our lecture on syllabus building for now. Design for Learning has been made possible by a grant from U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services along with project partners SCLRC, ESLN, and the iSchool at SU.